Want to make a podcast? Spotify's got a platform that lets you make one super easily, then distribute it everywhere, and even earn money, all in one place for free. It's called Spotify for Podcasters, and here's how it works. Spotify for Podcasters lets you record and edit podcasts right from your phone or computer, so no matter what your setup is like, you can start creating today. Then, you can distribute your podcast to Spotify and everywhere else podcasts are heard. Video podcasts are also available on Spotify. With Spotify for Podcasters, you can earn money in a variety of ways, including ads and podcast subscriptions. And best of all, it's totally free with no catch. Ever since I discovered Spotify for Podcasters, I feel like I've been having a lot more connection with my listeners through the Q&As and polls. I highly recommend you give it a try. Download the Spotify for Podcasters app or go to www.spotify.com forward slash podcasters to get started. Tis the season to shine with H&M. Discover the holiday collection and find fashionable pieces for your wardrobe or for under the tree. Get inspired and dazzle with this year's glam. From tuxedo styles, bow detailed pieces, impressive prints, and more. From unforgettable looks to unforgettable gifts. With fashion finds to home decor, find it all at H&M. Treat your loved ones and yourself this season. Shop in-store or at H&M.com. Hey everybody, welcome back to A Catholic's Perspective, the podcast all about being a young Catholic surviving in a secular world. Today I have a very special guest with me. We have Gabby from Gabby After Hours joining us to talk about mental prayer. Thank you so much for being here, Gabby. Amber, it is an awesome privilege to be on your podcast. I'm a big fan of yours. I recommend your channel to all my high school youth, so please keep it up and thanks for having me on. Thank you so much. It means a lot to me. I know the youth really need good role models these days, so You know, I'm just a tool in God's hands, but I'm so glad that um, I can be a role model for them, hopefully, and the ministry can continue helping them throughout their life. Um, But yeah, today is such a great topic. I think this is, you just did a, um, what was it, a video about mental prayer not too long ago? Yes, yes. So I recently, go ahead, I recently discovered mental prayer on accident. Um, I, I was doing it a little bit. I think a lot of people do mental prayer a little bit. They just didn't know that they were doing it. So Mm. I had always thought that using the imagination um, was dumb and effeminate and not for me. And I think it was the devil that was trying to tell me those things. And so I went through a large dry spell spiritually and I felt like something was missing. And one day I was eating breakfast with a good friend of mine and he was, he mentioned mental prayer, but he was really excited to share with me what happened to him on a retreat. And it basically summed up was Jesus and I hung out as friends in my prayer time. And I was like, sounds pretty lame if I'm being honest. Like you called me to get breakfast. I love you. We're going to talk. But like the big news is you won't believe what happened to me in my retreat. Jesus and I hung out as friends. And so I left that very confused. But the word that he used mental prayer specifically stood out in my mind. And my assistant had always been like talking about mental prayer and she would carry around a really fat book about mental prayer. That was like, I don't know, it was too thick for me to try and try it out. Wow. And then I had one time flipped through like a little pamphlet that like had steps to mental prayer. And I was like, I kind of do that. I call to mind the presence of God. I kind of do that. I kind of do that. But when I had breakfast with my friend, I was like, I really need to look into this seriously. And then I had gone to the seminary for a photo session and another seminarian came up to me and was like, you won't believe what happened to me in my mental prayer. And I was like, here we go again with these guys in mental prayer. And he is like a really strong, tough, rough looking dude, thick, luscious beard. I'm sure he uses Catholic beard bomb. It smells like uh, chrism, just an amazing, very influential, intimidating looking guy. And he started getting like fanboyish over what happened to him in mental prayer. He was like, I was walking through this forest and there was an amazing castle and Jesus was sitting on the throne and he looked like the king from the Lord of the Rings and he had this chain mail and all this stuff and his beard and his crown and all this stuff. And I was like, and he was going at it as if this really, really happened to him. And so I I was really shocked and kind of like taking it all in. And then he said, and then I saw the Virgin Mary and he like, wipes his eyebrows, walks around in a circle, paces back and forth, shakes his hands. And he's like, man, she is so beautiful. 
She is so beautiful. And she asked me if I would be, uh, if I would serve her and she put the miraculous medal on my, around my neck. And so I was like, this guy, this really happened to him. He really believes that all of this happened. This was a moment for this guy. And it all happened in his imagination. And so at that point, I was like, I'm all in. Let me study mental prayer. Let me figure it out. And I like consumed every book possible on mental prayer to try and figure out the science of it. Because what I discovered was that practically that I'm aware of, every single doctor of the church recommend, they didn't just recommend, uh, made, made it sound like it was a non-negotiable aspect of every single person's prayer life. Teresa of Avila says something to the effect of, if you don't do mental prayer, you don't even need demons because you cast yourself into hell. St. Alphonsus, Dr. Moral Theology said, without mental prayer, you cannot become a saint. In, in other words, without mental prayer, you cannot go to heaven. St. John of the Cross said, you cannot overcome the temptations of the devil without mental prayer. Another St. Alphonsus was it, God rarely, and this one really stood out to me, and I, I figured out why later, God rarely answers those who do not make mental prayer. And then just like quote after quote from St. Bonaventure, from St. Augustine, from St. Bernard of Clairvaux, all of these amazing like high power heavyweight saints of the church are like mental prayer is non-negotiable. Mental prayer is non-negotiable. And then sometimes they would interchange the word meditation with mental prayer. And so I, I feel like I've discovered oxygen. I, I feel like my prayer life before, if I was trying to survive off of the juice that is God's grace, it, it would be as if I was struggling to squeeze an orange. And I was just like, oh, come on, I need something to drink. Let me just get one single drop. And that would be like consolation or strength or clarity or success in prayer. And I was getting some. Like I have done things. I feel like God has spoken to me before. But this method of mental prayer it felt like I would squeeze and as, as opposed to a drop, I would get like an ocean of grace. So for example, we just, just right now, we just literally finished recording a live stream about lust. My brain was tired. Um, I was like out of it. I had to go to the chapel. I did my mental prayer just for a moment through the rosary, which we'll discuss how to use mental prayer in your rosary, how to use mental prayer at mass, how to use mental prayer during adoration. And so just for a moment, like my brain was refreshed. It, 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 like I just felt refreshed. Like, like I came back and it was like the last hour never happened. My mind was clear. My energy levels were strong. I felt like the Virgin Mary gave me advice. She said, have a sense that I'm present with you. Recall that I'm present. Allow me to lead you. Listen to my voice. And so I heard things that happened in here, but they also made an impact in my soul. So I know they were real. So I think before we can talk about what mental prayer is and how to do it properly. I think it's very important that we first, because we're going to be playing in the imagination and a lot of people will say, how do I know if it's God? How do I know if it's me? How do I know if it's the devil? You will hear the voice of the devil. Like I've, I've gone to pray to pray to Jesus. And I think Jesus is saying something to me, but because I know some basic rules of discernment, I know that I'm, it's not from God, that it's from the devil in, in very subtle ways. So just briefly before we talk about this, because you're opening yourself up to spirits, you're opening yourself up to voices. So basic discernment is if you're trying to be good, that's you, that's me, that's anybody who's on YouTube listening to Catholic stuff. We're trying to be good. So we're in one category. For those who are trying to be good, the voice of God, yes, you hear things here, but the voice of God, when he speaks, he works. So mm -hmm. when the voice of God says, be at peace, you feel the peace in your heart. When God says, um, break up with your boyfriend, if, it, if it's God, if it's God, you will have strength about it mm. and you will feel like I got to do this. I can do this. I don't need him anymore. There'll be a certain confidence when God says, commit to praying the entire rosary. For example, you feel strong about it in the moment. You feel consolation. You feel strength. You feel a commitment to sacrifice. You feel a closeness to Christ. You have a sense that you're not alone. Uh, we call that consolation. The voice of the devil is the opposite. He will discourage you. He will make you feel alone. He will tell you excuses. He will tell you you're not good enough. He will do everything possible to make you not have confidence in God and to let go of your good resolutions. So basic rules when you're in desolation are, one, persevere in your practices. Don't make a change when you're in desolation. If you made a commitment to pray the rosary, when you're in consolation, you better pray that freaking rosary. If you made a commitment to break up with your boyfriend in consolation, when the devil starts whispering to you, 
break up with your boyfriend, follow through with the commitments you made in consolation, and you fight back against the devil by prayer. So calling mm -hmm. on St. Michael, etc. So I'm just going to give you one quick example of how the, the devil can speak to you here. You think it's God, but you'll know the difference. So I recently made a trip to Europe and I bought two lenses to film B-roll for videos on the lives of the saints and apparitions. When I got back, I have a special relationship with a store that allows me to return things, no questions asked if I don't think I want it anymore. So I return one lens and in prayer, I asked Jesus about everything and Mary about everything. And I said, Lord, do you want me to return this 20 to 40 millimeter F 2.8 lens or do I keep it? In, in my head, I heard the voice say, no, you need it. Don't return it. Keep it, keep it, keep it. But in my heart, and, and it sounded right. He's like, you're going to need it. You use this lens a lot. You use it your entire trip. It sounded reasonable. But in my heart, that didn't feel right. Like there was something not right about what was going on in that circumstance. So in that scenario, you trust your heart. Just to mm -hmm. finish the story, I ended up returning it. And I absolutely needed that credit because I charged it. Uh, I don't recommend people charge things, but I needed that credit because shortly after it was discovered that I needed to go to Canada to film the, the testimonial of Jordan Peterson. Had I right. not returned that lens, I would not have had the money in my account to go to Canada. So discernment in little things is very important. When the devil's talking to us, it's because he knows something that we don't, and he doesn't want us to make progress in the spiritual life. So before we can talk about how to do mental prayer, you just need to know that you're going to hear voices and you trust what's going on in your heart. When you're talking to yourself and you're saying, Jesus is with me, Jesus is with me. I don't need to be afraid, but you don't have anything going on in here. That's just yourself making it up. Um, right. So so just those basic rules from discernment aside. So what is mental prayer? Mental prayer is a framework in which you really encounter Christ using your interior faculties. So you and I, we're discussing right now, we're looking at each other, we're, look, we're using our eyes, we're using our ears, we're processing what we're saying to one another in our brains. I'm sitting in a chair, I'm touching things. But interiorly, I have two faculties. So important to understand this. You have your intellect, which also is your reason, which also is your imagination. It's where you process information. You mm -hmm. also have your will. This is where your emotions reside and where your conclusions and your like, I'm making this firm resolution. I have to process things in my intellect before I can make firm resolutions. So all of the saints were saying, you cannot become a saint. You cannot overcome the devil. You cannot do all of these things without mental prayer. Because what is mental prayer? Mental prayer is encountering Jesus Christ, the real living person, in my mind. And then from that, I am strengthened to make choices based on that relationship with him. So mm. it's, it's very, very important. And a lot of times, it was the devil that was telling me, you don't have an imagination. You don't have the ability to do this. Because if I thought about it long and hard, I committed a lot of sins in my imagination because I was listening to the voice of the devil about various things. And so he simply did not want God to live in my imagination. He did not want God to encounter me here. And although before in my prayer life, when I pray the rosary or I would do my Lexio Divina, I, I didn't know the steps to mental prayer. I was getting some of the fruit, but knowing the steps to mental prayer opens me up in a way that simply doesn't happen before for real encounters with Christ. So I'm going to give you a lot of advice. Um, my recommendation is the Holy Spirit will put certain things in your mind. Cling to those one or two points. I'm going to try and simplify it as much as possible. But if you do this, it will impact every aspect of your spiritual life using these three points. So do you, have, do you want to make any comments or get into anything before we move on? I was just going to say for myself in mental prayer, um, yes. when I watched your video that you did the urgency of mental prayer, which I'll link uh -huh. in the description for people, um, it was almost like I didn't have, there was like a cognitive dissonance. Like I, I couldn't yeah. connect something. And then when I watched that video and I followed along with the little, um, you know, uh, example you gave, uh -huh. it's like pieces of the puzzle just clicked. Uh -huh. And I was finally able to have a mental prayer session where I felt this tug on my heart from Jesus to go to confession. It was like 11 o'clock at night, but luckily I have a 24 hour adoration chapel uh, down the street from me. 
so I, I was like in the bathtub at the time I was like getting ready for bed. I'm like, okay, really? Like this is right now, this is the time you want me to come visit. But I did. And I got in the car around 11 and I went to the adoration chapel and it was so odd. It, uh, I just felt drawn and there was a cleaning lady in there with a vacuum. So it was very loud in there, but I, mm -hmm. it was almost like I was able to tune her out and I started doing the steps that you you know, advised for mental prayer. And I pictured the doorway to Jesus's house and I pictured the door mm -hmm. and I knocked on the door and Jesus opened the door and he was so excited. He was like, finally, like you came, like I've been calling you, you've come like, finally, welcome, come in. And it was so crazy because it was so real. And, um, you know, I was just able to sit at his feet in this in this little hut, you know, not made for a king, but yet it fit him so well as a carpenter's son. And wow. I sat at his feet and I told him everything that happened. I told him about wedding planning, my fiance's struggles, my struggles, my family. And something that you said that in that talk that you gave, how our lady told you, like, yes, you give things to me, but you don't actually give them to me. Mm. Yeah. Jesus kind of said something along those lines to me as well, where he's like, you trust me, but you don't trust me as you should. And mm. I was like, oh, I was like, well, then how do I do that? Like, what do I have to do? And over time of doing what Jesus told me, which was say the Divine Mercy Chaplet and to trust in him and to, you know, give my worries to him and Our Lady, over time, my anxiety has like decreased a lot, my worries and all of my fears of the future has decreased a lot. And so um, that's just one of my experiences with mental prayer. And I think it's so important because I never had that connection before with Jesus until that moment. And I think everyone needs that connection with Jesus. Yeah. And when you share that, I I'll just be honest, a grace comes out of you. Like there's so much depth and so much richness in everything you were sharing. Like that happened. That really happened. And I read your community post the night that you posted that. And so one, thank you for sharing with everybody your experience, but that came straight out of your heart from a, a real encounter that Jesus had been waiting and has been waiting and is waiting for every single person to have that encounter with him. And that happens in the imagination. And for some people that's scary, um, but it's, it's a real thing. And, and maybe it's really deep some days, other days it's drier or it's more um, distracted, but you have to show up and you have to try it. And so we are going to be in the imagination. We are going to close our eyes. And St. Teresa of Avila tells us that closing your eyes is the best thing to do because my brain takes in so much sensory information. My eyes are processing everything that I see. So by blinding that exterior faculty, it heightens my interior faculties. Mm, so true. So we're going to use our imaginations and that's okay. Before, the, the reason that's okay is because we're going to call on the Holy Spirit. We're going to call on St. Michael. We're going to make an act of faith in the presence of God. We're going to put ourselves in a biblical scene. And so, yes, we're imagining something about the life of Christ. We're imagining this conversation. But at some point, Jesus is going to take over and mm -hmm. your heart will begin to palpitate or a peace will come over you. And I find that the times that I just let go and I'm like, I'm going to stop trying to control this. Like, it might be weird. Like, we might be in the Sea of Galilee, and I'm, like, walking into the water. And, like, I'm, like, about to drown. That I don't know what's happening. But when you let go and you give God the freedom to speak back to you and you stop trying to control it, God will actually speak back to you. And if something feels uneasy in your chest, all you do is you say, okay, come Holy Spirit, help me to pray well. You're the, you're the king of prayer. So... You don't have to have a very good or a very vivid imagination. St. Teresa of Avila said that when she saw the face of Christ, it was like looking at mud. She could barely mm -hmm. sense that he was present. So it it doesn't matter. If, if you imagine Jesus as an Asian man, does not matter. If you imagine the Virgin Mary as an African woman, does not matter. As long as that person is Jesus, as long as that person is Mary, the Holy Spirit will work through that let it go. So we're going to take, I'm going to go over briefly what the steps are, and then we will look at it more in depth. So I've broken it down to three steps. Teresa of Avila has five steps. I'll tell you briefly. Teresa of Avila says, preparation, put yourself in the presence of God, a uh, select your material. What are you going to think about? Um, then 
talk to God, consider that, talk to God, and then conclude. We're going to trash all that. We're just going to do three steps. So the first step, the mental prayer, and this is the first step to all prayer. This is how you make everything a prayer. You call to mind that God is present. And mm -hmm. how present is he? He's like closer than my face. I'm a member of the body of Christ. I'm literally a member of him. I'm a temple of the Holy Spirit. God literally dwells inside of my body and inside of my soul, really and truly. I'm a temple of the Holy Spirit. God is holding me into existence. So when I go down to pray, I'm not speaking out to some nebulous force. I'm talking to somebody who's like this close, like closer than my hand to my face. So that's generically step one. Just call to mind that God is present. When you have dryness or distraction, when you're praying your rosary, when you go to the Blessed Sacrament, when you're going to Mass, when you're about to play in a sporting event, God is this close to me. Everything I do becomes a prayer. Step number two is in your mind, visualize to the best of your ability a biblical scene. So just for our example's sake, let's say we're imagining Jesus, his hands nailed to a cross really thick and you're looking at his chest and he's gasping for air. So Teresa of Avila says, consider it until it makes an impression on you. So hands didn't do it for me. Then when I thought of his chest coming in and out, that does it for me. Like that makes an impression. Then talk to him in that scene. So Jesus is on the cross. He's struggling to breathe. That's so step one was God is present. Step two, I'm considering it. Step three is talk to him there. Whatever is on your heart about whatever you want. If you're obsessed about a boy or obsessed about a girl, or you're really worried about school, or you're really worried about a friend or finances, get it out there. Whatever's weighing on your heart, that's what he wants to talk about. And just spill it out. Like Jesus, I'm really, really struggling with my parents. I don't know what to do with them. They're always fighting. Help me. And, but then the key is, so, and so the, let's take a pause. Why did St. Alphonsus say God rarely answers those who does, do not do mental prayer? Is because now I am at the most sacred moment. I am offering to God the Father, his son, and I'm focusing on how much suffering he was enduring. Now, I'm, now I have something to offer back to God the Father. Mm -hmm. And so I make these petitions in light of what, in light of Jesus's love for me. And the key is now I let go. And I give Jesus the opportunity to speak back to me. And that's the hardest part is we're just like, just be still and be silent and look. And, and when you feel like he's not speaking to you, go back to that biblical consideration mm -hmm. and you will be surprised what he puts on your heart. Many times I've been caught off guard. I think everything's fine. I go to pray. I do my mental prayer. And then all of a sudden it's like, Jesus is like, take a seat. We need to talk. I'm like, about what? Like, I think everything's great. He's like, actually two hours ago, you said this, or you did this, and you cannot continue like that. You've got to make a change. Um, and he'll, and I know it's him for a couple of reasons. One, he rebukes me about something that I had not thought about. Two, mm -hmm. I feel strength about making that correction. So if it's like, you know, apologize to this person, I'm like, normally I'd be like, oh, no, 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 that'd be too awkward. Like, I'll be like, nah, I need, I need to apologize. I was out of line. I was rude. I was short-tempered. I was rough around the edges. Their idea was good. My idea was bad. And then also there will be like a warmth in my heart, which will, like, it, it'll, be, it'll be weird because like I'm here. My heart is beating really fast, which doesn't make any sense because I've just been sitting here. Um, so these signs combined. But so those are the steps. And we'll, we'll mm -hmm. go through them a little bit more in detail in a moment. But you don't need the steps. So these are the steps, but at the same time, you don't need the steps because sometimes like yourself, when you mentioned you went to the chapel, you didn't need necessarily to think of a biblical scene. You, you did step one. God is present here. God called me here. Is there anything you'd like to say to me? Like, it's, I'm not going to, like, you're not going to say, Jesus, wait here. I know you want to talk, but I have to imagine you on the sea of Galilee. No, he was speaking to you and you went wherever he wanted you to go. So step one, presence of God. And do, do you have anything to say? No. Okay. Then I'm going to make my mind fertile by being on the cross. Did you want to mm -hmm. add anything? I definitely think that's so important. And especially for people who, you know, I've gotten so many comments and so many people who are like, oh, that's happening in your head. Like that's all happening. Mm. I'm like, yeah, that's, 
that's how it works but they're like derogatory yes. comments where they're like yes it's just happening in your head it's like right. no but it's so real we have so much yeah. our imagination has so much power and yes. for the people to kind of just you know we all had i think i had the same mindset that you did when you first heard about mm. mental prayer like ah, it's you know it's it's just whatever but then actually experiencing it and learning more about it and how to do it properly I feel bad for these people who just yeah. feel like it's all in their head or my head, whatever, because they're not yeah. experiencing that closeness, that connection that we all desire. And yet nobody seems to know how to get. Right. And so God gave us these interior faculties and he wants us to use them. St. Ignatius of Loyola is very famous for that. And like, imagine yourself in the scene and what you're doing is you're making the Bible real. And because mm -hmm. sacred scripture is inspired by the Holy Spirit, Anything, anything whatsoever that you're imagining in the biblical context is fertile. It's spiritually fertile. You could be imagining an ant hill at the crucifixion, and you're just like fixated on the ants walking back and forth on the. And then you're like, "Whoa, these ants have no idea that the creator of the universe is like being crucified right in front of them." Like everything in the Bible is fertile, and so. Mm -hmm. What I recommend, so we're going to go through the three steps in a little bit more detail. So step number one, you don't have to always do this. Sometimes you just say, God, I believe you're present. Let me pour your heart out. But when you're dry, you, you follow these steps. So step number one, pray to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is real. Jesus promised, I have to leave you so that the Holy Spirit will come. He's going to teach you to pray. He's going to pray in and through you. He's going to lead you to the truth. So it's an act of humility. Say, Holy Spirit, please help me. I can't do this. I don't want to my imagination's garbage. Pray to the Holy Spirit. I like to, it's not always necessary, but I like to call on St. Michael to put his wings of protection around me, not just to protect my imagination from the attacks of the devil and help me to discern what's happening inside my heart, but also to protect me from distraction because the devil does not want me to do mental prayer because Teresa of Avila says, if I pray the way that God wants me to pray, which is myself, like I'm not going to pray like you or you're not going to pray like me, then I will become the person that God created me to be. And just from that fact, regardless of what my vocation is, grace is going to flow into my life and it's going to flow out into the world for the salvation of thousands of souls, even though I might not be preaching to them because grace is conversion is a grace that comes from God through sacrifice, through the sacrifice of my will for the will of God. So the devil does not want me to pray because prayer is the fountain of all grace. It's when my, I contact God. So St. Michael, wrap your wings of protection around me. You can say the St. Michael if you'd like. Um, I also ask my guardian angel to help. Sometimes I'll ask my saints because I don't, this should, the intro part shouldn't take too long. The main point is God is present. So I'll ask the Virgin Mary, Blessed Mother, intercede for me. I can't pray the way I should. And then you have to make a firm act of faith in the presence of God. Just saying it, saying, God, I believe you're present. God, I believe you're in my soul. God, I believe you're in my body. I believe that you're holding me into existence. Those acts of the will changes the atmosphere mm -hmm. around the room and it changes reality. Those words, just acknowledging that God is present, acknowledging that Mary's present. Then I recommend imagining the face of Jesus. I'm not gonna lie. I watch The Chosen. I love The Chosen. When I, when I go on a journey with Jesus, it's either Jonathan Rumi or Jim Caviezel. Everybody knows Jonathan Rumi is a little bit more of a goofy Jesus, a little bit more buddy-buddy, ha-ha-ha. And we all know that Jim Caviezel is more of a stoic, uh, still, serious Jesus. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter which one you choose. It doesn't matter if you're, like I said, if your Jesus is African-American. All that matters is that you're praying to God, to Jesus, and God will speak through that avatar, so to speak. So mm -hmm. I imagine that person. I walk with them. It doesn't matter if you imagine. If you're, and you can. This is great because you can do this with Jesus. You can do this with Mary. You can do this, do this with the saints. I've done this with us. Uh, I, I was in Fatima in Lisbon, Portugal, and we were in the hospital where Jacinta Marto died. And the priest that I was with was looking everywhere. Where's the room she died? Where's the room she died? None of the employees knew where she died. And then I, I got on my knees, I, where I stood, I don't remember if I was kneeling or standing, but I was in a, 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 I entered mental prayer. I said, okay, Holy Spirit, you're here. Jesus, you're present. Your Saint Jacinta is a member of your body. Let me speak to her. And I visualized her in my imagination standing before me. And I said, little Jacinta, where did you die? And in my mental prayer, she said, on the second floor. So I said, Father, go check the second floor of the hospital. And sure enough, 
from the second floor of the hospital, there was a plaque saying Jacinta died here. Wow. Now, again, I'm not, I'm not a mystic. I'm not a prophet. But it happened. And, and wow. things like that have happened to me a lot. I mentioned, I think I mentioned the Jordan Peterson thing. Yeah. I was in, the, I was in the, the daily mass chapel doing my mental prayer. I walked past a statue of St. Jose Maria Escriva. St. Jose Maria Escriva in my mental prayer said, your life is about to change. Big things are going to open up for you. Maybe. So I'm like, I felt the burning in my heart. I'm like, maybe, maybe not. I go to my office. My assistant says, I just got an email from a priest named Father Jose Maria. You're not going to believe this. Jordan Peterson and Tammy Peterson are going to convert. And Father Jose Maria says that the Virgin Mary told him that this interview has to go on my channel. And that mm -hmm. she told him three nights in a row and he couldn't sleep for three nights. I go to Canada to film this testimonial. We film it in an Opus Dei chapel with the relics of St. Jose Maria present, with the statue of St. Jose Maria present. Tammy Peterson was healed on the fifth day of a novena to Jose Maria. So was I imagining that, my mental prayer, or did my mental prayer really receive some sort of prophecy about of what was about to happen? So mental prayer is real. You can do this with your favorite saints. You imagine, so you all you do is call to mind that God is present. Then you say, God, I believe you're present. Let me talk to St. Therese of the Child Jesus. Let me talk to St. Bernadette. And then you imagine they're present. You tell them what you want and you listen to see what they have to say. And mm. maybe they say you're going to become a millionaire. Maybe they say you're a scrub and you need to get your life together. If there's any truth in what they're saying, you're going to feel it in your heart and you act on what you believe to be true. So step one of mental prayer, presence of God, call upon the saints. Step two if God has not spoken to you yet, find a biblical scene because that's the most spiritually fertile. So when I pray, I, I meet up with Jesus and I say, Jesus, I need to talk to you. And then he usually says, let's go to the sea. Okay, what are we going to do with the sea? He's like, I'm going to teach you how to fish. You're teaching me how to fish? Yeah, are you trying to save souls? I was like, yeah. He's like, then you need to learn how to fish. And then we'll, we'll sit on a boat and we'll have a conversation and we'll talk. But if, you, if that's not happening, force it. Pick, mm -hmm. you know, a mystery from the life of Christ in the rosary, the, the crowning with thorns. Teresa of Avila really liked to pray about the scourging at the pillar. And then the third step after your consideration is talk to Jesus. Let him speak to you. It's not hard. You want to add anything? Because now I know you've been doing this for a while, too. No. Yeah, I think it's fantastic. And wow, like people talk about coincidences so often. Yeah. And it's like there's... I, I don't know. I mean, I feel like there's no such thing. I mean, there's a God incidence is what people are calling yes. it now that are Catholic. And yeah. I'm like, I do believe that God works in mysterious ways and sometimes funny ways. He does have a sense of humor. He's very funny. Yes. And I'm like, okay, I see what you're doing. Like, <laughs> and you know, St. Jose Maria Escriva, he's one of the people that I just learned about when I came into my faith. I had no idea he existed mm -hmm. prior to my, uh, you know, reversion. And he is fantastic. And for so many, you know, things to happen around him, like that's, yeah. that's insane. And I think people yeah. underestimate the power that we have to connect to these people because, you know, they're more than willing to connect with us, but we have to be the yes. ones who are open to connecting with them. So many yes. times, you know, how many times do people get the urge to pray? But instead of actually doing it, they're like, oh, but I'll do laundry first or, oh, I'll do this first. And then the rest of the day goes by and they haven't prayed. And yep. it's one of those things yep. that we really need to make it a priority in our life. And we need to make sure that what we're doing is for the glory of God. And we are making those connections with our heavenly family because they're there to help us. Amen. Yeah, we as Catholics, we have so much power that we don't realize so if you think about the New Testament, they were constantly saying, discern the spirits, discern the spirits, false prophets. These people have the gift of prophecy or two or three are prophesying in your presence. All these supernatural powers that for some reason in the modern church, we don't think is real. And mm -hmm. like the saints are like, let me help you. Let me help you. Let me help you. But I never ask the saints for advice and I'm never open to hearing their voice. And so they don't speak to me unless I'm like receiving an extraordinary grace. So I right. want to talk. This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Selling a little or a lot? Do your thing however you cha-ching with Shopify, the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. 
Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout. 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms. Get a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash offer 23. To you about a little bit about brilliant. The Virgin Mary is brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. So when she appeared at Fatima, she told the shepherd, well, she told Lucia, on the, about the first Saturday devotion. She says, go to mass, go to confession, pray the rosary, and then spend 15 med minutes meditating with me on the life of Christ. This is so important because when the saints talk about meditation, they mean mental prayer. So if you read Alfonso Saguari or Teresa of Avila, one sentence they'll say, mental prayer is the most important thing. That's why without meditation, this. So they're mm -hmm. using the words mental prayer and meditation interchangeably. When I heard meditation, I think that means think about Jesus as a baby. Okay, I'm thinking about him. Okay, he's a baby, he's small. What they really mean is imagine you're in the presence of the baby Jesus. It's like as if I can hold the baby Jesus and talk to the baby Jesus and hold him in my arms. So what Mary's advice is pick some mystery from the rosary, which covers practically all the aspects of the life of Christ, and imagine that you're there really present, and she's also there really present. So there's four ways to your, use your imagination. Number one, I'm really present beholding this scene as if it's really there. Number two, I imagine that the scene is happening right in front of me. So some people have a bad imagination. When I first started doing mental prayer, I, I had difficulty focusing on you know, the scourging at the pillar, but I can easily imagine what it would feel like if somebody whipped me with something, like they mm -hmm. hit me with a, a spiky things that pulled my flesh out. Wow. Okay. So if I can imagine that for half a second, even for just a moment, think about that happening to Christ. So number one, I imagine it as if I'm seeing it there present. Number two, imagine as if it's happening here and now in my bedroom to me. Number three, like Ignatius of Loyola, imagine as if you're a member, you're, you're Barabbas and you're the one who's getting freed. And Jesus is the one who's being, they're yelling at him, crucify him. Or you can have Jesus as your guide and you're standing outside of that scene and in your mental prayer, he's explaining it to you. So you have all the freedom in the world to imagine this in your head. So now that, that's what brings me to the rosary. So our lady is so, so brilliant. She's so brilliant. So every time we do the rosary and we're supposed to meditate on the life of Christ, that's at every mystery. So normally, and, the, and I'm the, like, I consider myself one of the longest standing, consistent, pray the rosary, 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 pray, the rosary, <laughs> pray so many rosaries until your hands uh, can't hold rosaries anymore. But even like I was mistaken, I would say, okay, the first joyful mystery, the Annunciation of the Angel Gabriel to the Blessed Virgin Mary. I would think of it, then I'd be like, all right, our Father who art in heaven, or I would say, I, I would just say the mystery in my head and then I'd go for it, right? I'm losing out on power. I'm losing mm -hmm. out on power. So what I should do, what I encourage everybody to do, and you'll notice the fruit of your rosary be like, wow, like I was shooting baby bullets, now I'm shooting missiles. So let's say it's the Annunciation. For a moment, in your mind, imagine, and it doesn't have to be good, you're at the Annunciation. You're looking at the face of the angel Gabriel. His face is like illuminated, it's glowing, it's see-through at the same time. You look at the Virgin Mary, she's like, wow. I'm imagining that, now pause. Gabriel, I need your help. I need you to intercede for me. Help me to do this, that, or the other thing. Blessed Mother, just as you, the angel Gabriel spoke to you, please send your angel to speak to my cousin about X, Y, or Z. So mm. just long enough to make an impression on me. In mental prayer, when you're doing like what you did and what I often do, and you're like just doing mental prayer, you stay there longer, like 15 minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, an hour, depending on what's going on. But when you're praying the rosary just long enough to make an impression, then you ask in that scene what you want. Then you pause just long enough that if the Virgin Mary wants to get something out, she can spit it out to you and say, you're the one who needs to contact your cousin. I'll send my <laughs> angel, but I need you to reach out, call them today, tell them you love them, whatever. But you just give her the opportunity to speak back to you. Then you pound out, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. And you will notice... The fruit, oh man, it's just so much more powerful. And then the rosary is, the rosary is not as boring anymore because mm -hmm. I'm talking to God. He's talking back to me. I feel like he's giving me insights. 
On top of that, the Hail Marys, the Our Fathers, everything else that already made the rosary great. You're going to be a spiritual king if you, do, if you just did that. So true. I think I definitely struggled with the rosary for so long because I'm like, oh, okay, mm. here we go again. Like another Hail Mary, another this. And when I was growing up, my mom, what she used mm. to do is um, when we said the Hail Mary, we'd say Hail Mary, full of grace, mm. Lord is with thee. And then we'd say, um, uh, oh my gosh, what's the second part? Why do I always blank on holy that? Ma holy, ma holy Mary, Mother of God. Yeah. Then we'd say, Holy yeah. Mary, Mother of God, pray for, you know, uh, an uncle or an aunt or something. Now and at I the love hour. it. Yeah. Because that's how you kept kids engaged. But mm -hmm. when I got older and I realized that's not exactly how you pray, my mom did a great job of right. engaging us in yeah. it. But I realized later sure. that that's not how it's supposed to be as an adult. I found it so boring. And then, yeah, I found that that video and I was like, oh, interesting. Because I always struggled to sit still and to pray the rosary. I'm like, this is so boring. And now, yeah. I mean, obviously, sometimes it takes a little effort for me to do it. Because yeah, of course. You got to find the time, but yeah. when you do it, it's like, there's no regrets at all. Yeah, definitely. hundred percent. It changes you. It's like the rosary I say is like going through purgatory. Like it yeah. sucks at first, but the longer you do it, the better you feel afterwards. So true. And so mental prayer also should play a role in our adoration of the blessed sacrament. So if you go to adoration or if you're at a tabernacle, my eyes deceive me. Mm. The best posture to, to pray according to Alfonso Saguari is to kneel down, but it's not like a tough man contest. Like at some point, if you've got arthritis in your knees, et cetera. But even when my knees hurt, when I kneel down, I feel like it's easier for me to pray because my body and my soul are aligned to the reality that's present. But if you're going to sit in a pew, they, they recommend, the spiritual writers recommend sitting up straight, like if you're having an audience with the king. And so when you go to the Blessed Sacrament, it's easier to pray because God is really present. So like he's really, truly, substantially present, body, blood, soul, and divinity. But my eyes don't see that. So when I close my eyes and I can imagine Jesus looking like a majestic king, I can look, imagine him looking like a man who was just scourged and beaten, like laying half dead at the pillar. It doesn't matter. But the very fact that I make an act of the faith, act of faith that God is present really close to me, I'm imagining his face. I'm listening to what he's saying here, even though he's physically present over there. Again, remember the intellect and the will. Now my intellect, my imagination has been engaged. That makes my feelings easier to correspond with what's going on in my head to my heart. And then that strengthens the will and all of my interior faculties are engaged. And we have to remember that we are members of the body of Christ. Christ is the head. When a person tries to tell their foot what to do. You don't use your words out loud. You communicate interiorly. You send interior impulses. So by engaging that act in the brain during adoration, it changes your prayer. And you go. You start to treat the adoration chapel and the blessed sacrament like it's really Jesus. And you're like, I need to talk to him. I need to go and talk to my friend. I need my counselor. And you go there. He solves your problem. And you're like, Lord, I love you. Why do I ever leave you? You're the best. And then the same thing happens at mass. At mass, it's super distracting. There's kids, there's this person, there's that person. There, there's just so much going on. Oh, it's a father. It's a, I'm so used to seeing this dude. So when I close my eyes, it's time of the consecration. I imagine the face of Jesus in front of me, that same face. I imagine being crucified in my imagination. It's true. I'm at the crucifixion. The blood and water is flowing out of his side. I'm saying, eternal father, I offer you the body, blood, soul, and divinity of our dearly beloved son, our Lord Jesus Christ, an atonement for our sins. And everything I ask for at that moment is heightened, is elevated. Before I was at mass, super powerful. But there's a theological principle that we receive grace according to our disposition. So if I go in there with eyes open, just accepting, depending where you go to mass, it can be really bad. You got you know, father friendly up there holding the Eucharist around and, and smiling and doing all sorts of crazy stuff. Like, are we at the sacrifice of the mass or are we at a, a picnic at, at lunch? Sometimes you know. can't tell. <laughs> you can't tell. And so that impacts my disposition. I have all of heaven. I have God, the fullness of grace available to me, but because I'm following along with what everybody else is doing, I'm receiving very little. I'm receiving, but very little versus I go there. I'm visualizing a crucifixion. I'm visualizing the lance piercing his side. I'm going up to Holy Communion, imagining that I'm going to receive the risen Lord. I'm coming back. I'm imagining him speak to me. He's so close. He's in my chest. My disposition, extraordinarily different than if I go in there with worldly senses 
full blown. That's one of the beauties of the Latin mass is that there's so much silence. It kind of forces you to be interior, but at the new mass, which I think 99.9% .9 of people go to, there's a lot of back and forth. There's a lot of, I say it, you say it, a lot of exterior stimulation that keeps the interior man from receiving Christ fully. So mental prayer, mental prayer. Mental prayer. That's so, so true. We attend the traditional Latin mass and yeah. we go to the 1230, which is high mass. So we have mm. the choir and oh. it's something about it where it's like, even though there is noise because of the choir mm. and everything, because it's all ordered towards God and obviously yes. it's in Latin, it's not in English. So unless you completely understand Latin and can understand and yeah. translate what they're saying, mm. in a way, it kind of just washes over you. You don't really... Yes soak yes. it in and it becomes a distraction it's more like you can sit there and you can really yeah, enjoy it, it yes it like lifts your heart up to god and it's mm -hmm. so beautiful especially during the high mass where it's like music music and it's like lift 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 and then at the time of consecration it's like there's just like it's just perfectly designed that there's like perfect silence during this most sacred moment that it's it's kind of like in a movie when there's like a, this huge crescendo and the most important thing happens and all the music cuts off Oh, it's perfect. It's it, it's just so brilliant. True. So, and I think but that doesn't happen. Yeah, I think it's definitely also important because um, I hate the sign of peace. Everybody knows I yes. do. I, yeah, I just yeah, I too. cannot stand it because here I am kneeling, getting ready to receive the King of Kings, and yeah. then all of a sudden, like I have yeah. to shake hands with my neighbor. Yeah. But with the music and the TLM doesn't have the sign of peace, right. um, which I I love because then I can just focus on God. And as right. the choir sings. I can close my eyes and I imagine that's what heaven sounds like, you know, yes. is like Sanctus, yes. Sanctus, Sanctus, Holy, Holy, Holy. And I can, the music really helps me visualize that and, and mentally, uh, you know, prepare. Yeah. Well, that mass was made for that end and goal to make you feel like you're in heaven. And it's just unarguable that the new mass and I go to the new mass, but I can be critical of something that I go to. Um, it, it's made it, it feels like it was made for children now repeat after me now stay engaged yes so the reality is if you want to get a lot out of the mass you have to mentally prepare yourself and close your eyes and visualize what's really happening because it's not as apparent and some places you go to the music and it's not a sacrifice it is a rock concert or it is anything but the crucifixion of our lord jesus christ which is happening in an unbloody manner and so mental prayer, mental prayer, mental prayer. We might not have all of the same um, benefits that the saints had, but they were all made saints by mental prayer. And, and God is calling us to become great saints. And Teresa of Avila says that mental prayer is the gateway to all the other great prayer forms. So those people who had mystical visions, those people who left their body and went with Jesus to heaven and did all these things, their body was still present. All of those mystical visions, all of those uh, encounters with the divine, uh, St. Faustina, Padre Pio, all of that happened, those encounters inside of the soul. And it became so great that sometimes that went outside of the soul and they saw Jesus with their physical eyes. But it started first with mental prayer. Without Mental prayer is not an option. It's not an option. It, it's not optional. We must make an act of the will. I'm going to try is poor as my efforts might be with the help of the Holy Spirit, which is humility saying, I can't do this. We, we can't, we can't force ourselves to encounter God. I'm going to try to do mental prayer, whether that's through my rosary, whether that's through 15 minutes of silence, doing Lexio Divina, and then visualizing that biblical scene, then putting myself in that biblical scene. It will absolutely and radically change your life. You got to do it. You got to try it. Wow. No, it's so true. And I'm so glad we could talk about this because not yes. enough people know about it. It's not being promoted enough by the church, right. I feel like. Right. So I yeah. really do appreciate you coming on and talking to us An about honor. this. Um, do you have any last words for our listeners who might be like, oh, it's too hard. I don't know what I'm going to do not, about it. It's not too, it's not too hard. You, you have to try it. Give your it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be pretty. It doesn't have to make sense. Just start imagining what Jesus would say. Even if it's cloudy, try it. And what you will find is that it's through that mental prayer that the Lord is going to fill you with, it, we're not doing it for consolation. I know, Karen, not you. The Karen's <laughs> the we don't pray for consolation. It doesn't matter. I'm weak. I need consolation, okay? Please forgive me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I need to hear so the voice true. of God to make good decisions. Uh, so the Lord will fill you with consolation. The Lord will answer your prayers. You will have an intimacy that you felt was lacking before. 
But again, you have to listen to your conscience. You got to listen to your heart. I encourage you, if you're watching this and you found this beneficial, this is so important. Amber and I are discussing something very important that is rarely ever discussed. How are other people going to find out about it unless you share it? This is something that was a major treasure of the church and within the last hundred years somehow got buried and is now being rediscovered. It is the will of the Holy Spirit that mental prayer be shared because it will impact every facet of our lives. Share this video. This is honestly probably the best discussion that I've ever seen on mental prayer that you and I just had. So share this video. Amber, keep doing it. Keep promoting it. I love what you do. You're constantly saying the most important things. Please keep doing Thank it. You. And I'll be praying for you and for your fiance. I really appreciate it, Gabby. The words mean so much to me because it's really difficult out there. And I'm just so glad that, you know, we discovered this and I discovered it because of you. And so it's it's a cycle. And so people are going to discover yeah. it because of us. And we need to keep it going. And so, yeah. yes, I completely agree. If you guys are watching this or you're listening to this on the podcast, whatever, you know, share it with whoever, anyone. They don't even have to be Catholic. I don't care. Nope. Share it with them. They might find it interesting. Um, but yeah, no, I really, really appreciate it, Gabby. Thank you so much. And I'm always praying for your ministry. Thank you. If you ever need anything, reach out to me. Likewise. Thank you. And with all of that being said, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video slash podcast, and I will talk to you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.